For Brunei Darussalam to become a Zikir nation, the use of Jawi writing is a heritage that should be appreciated, preserved and developed. This is because Jawi writing is a priceless treasure and heritage to the Malays. The source of Jawi writing was based on Al-Quran that contributes to balanced spiritual, mental and physical development of the race, nation and ummah until today. The Minister of Education, Pehin Datuk Sri Satya, Dr. Haji Abu Baka, made the emphasis at the official opening of the regional conference on Jawi and Arabic writing organized by the Arabic Language and Islamic Civilization Faculty of the University. University Islam Sultan Sharif Ali, UNISA, recently. Brunei's Minister of Education added that the use of Jawi writing in the Malay language raised the prestige of the Malay language as the medium of Islamic religion and perpetuated the status, efficiency and authoritativeness of the language, especially during the 16th and 17th centuries that brought about the growth of intellectualism of the Malay race. He said that Jawi writing is the earliest form of writing used systematically in in the Malay language. Although Arabic and Malay language are not from the same cluster of language family, between them exists the cultural and Islamic religious relationship with the rate of absorption of Arabic into the Malay language being the highest in the development of the Malay language itself. The conference introduces various writings using Arabic letters as well as identifies the position of Jawi writing in a new technology in the future. The theme of the conference is Jawi writing, the eminence of Islamic civilization. Thai people began the first day of vegetarian festival with religious ceremony and festive activities. During the nine-day festival, people observing the vegetarian festive do not take meat and alcohol. They will do merit-making and spiritual cleansing practices. Chinese communities in the south have attracted tourists with their colorful and festive activities. Krabi tourism business groups say more tourist arrivals during this time. Chan Nan Sri Sawat, a business leader of Krabi, said tourists and devotees are drawn into Krabi for its rich cultural heritage and vegetarian festival celebration at over 70 shrines of Chinese deities. Krabi had seen more charter flights from China, Malaysia and Singapore. In Songkla, people gathered at a ceremony to worship Chinese deities at a shrine, marking the start of the festival. Deriving from the Nine Emperor Gods Festival of Chinese tradition, Thai people celebrate the vegetarian festival beginning on the 15th day of the 10th lunar month. Thailand's Vegetarian Festival 2014 takes place for nine days from Wednesday to October 2nd, but some will hold the precepts for a longer period. In Panga, shrine in Takuapa district held a centuries-old tradition to worship a revered deity. It is believed to ward off evils and bad luck for worshippers. People in white clothes avoid killing or harming animals and be mindful of their actions and thoughts during the vegetarian festival or Tesakarn Kinje in Thai. A zoo in Thailand's Chonburi province introduces its new member, a female baby pygmy hippopotamus born on September 2nd. Kao Kiao Open Zoo has welcomed the baby hippo, which is staying close with her 15-year-old mother, Jonah, and enjoys good health, according to the zoo veterinarian team. Suriya Sengpong, the zoo director, said the baby hippo brought joy to all the staff for such a good news for the next school break next month. Born of 36-year-old father named Lebo, the baby is the fourth picnic hippo to have been born at the open zoo. Native to West Africa, the pygmy hippo is one of two extant species of hippopotamate family. They are herbivores and feed on ferns, fruits, plants, grasses and fruits. Estimated at 3,000 of them surviving in the wild, pygmy hippos are listed as endangered species as the World Conservation Union estimates. Over 200 entrance devotees took part in Phuket's famous vegetarian festival parade recently. The festival, rooted in the Chinese Nine Emperor Gods Festival, is held on the ninth lunar month of the Chinese calendar. Thai people, particularly those of Chinese descent, observe vegetarian festival rules from September 24th to October 2nd. 
On the second day of the festival, in trans devotees representing shrines of Chinese deities formed a procession on Phuket streets. Popularity of Phuket Vegetarian Festival has drawn tourists and more people to join practice of devotion throughout the years. Highlight of the vibrant festival is a self-mutilation performed by scores of possessed and trans devotees or Ma Song in Thai. Ma Song, as vehicles of gods, manifest supernatural powers and perform self-torture in order to shift evil from individuals onto themselves and to bring the community good luck. This year, the number of Ma Songs exceeded 200, higher than the past years. In other communities, stalls selling vegan food, lively parades and fireworks make up the scenes. People flock shrines to have vegetarian meals and worship gods and goddesses asking for blessings. The local media say more people of younger generations observe the festival this year. First and foremost rule of the festival is strict vegetarian diet refraining from all meat and killing animals. The festival thus promotes good hygiene, brightness and inner peace and draws more and more people each year. The economic and social effects of climate change are becoming increasingly apparent in Vietnam. The Mekong Delta and the low-lying zone of Dong Tap Moi are particularly vulnerable to the negative impacts of climate change. To help locals improve their daily income while giving them chance to protect the environment at the same time, Vietnamese authorities have collaborated with NGOs to implement an eco-aqua farming program whereby locals raise shrimps, snails and other aquatic organisms in the local protective forests. For the past three years, Mai Van Tuong has earned an annual income of 30 million Vietnam duong, which is 1,600 US dollars from raising snails in the local protective forests. This new model has two benefits. Locals will have more income from their aqua farming while they act as custodians of the protective forests at the same time. This dual benefit will help the region cope with destructive impacts of climate change. Mr. Mai Van Tuong said local authorities made a contract with him. They say that he could grow snails in the protective forests and in return, he will look after the forest. They communicated by telephone. He called the local authorities whenever he finds someone has damaged the forest. Mr. Vo Van Kuang said their annual income can rise as high as 60 or 70 million Vietnam dong or $3,000-$3,500. With this new income, they will surely escape from poverty. For the past few years, aquaculture in protective forests has been an effective model for many coastal regions in Vietnam such as Chai Mao, Kien Giang, Sok Trang and Tra Vin. Locals have raised many different aquatic organisms such as snails, crabs and shrimps. This eco-aqua farming model has proved its long-term sustainability because it achieves both economic and environmental benefits. Mr. Tran Huang Bei says he finds it much more effective to raise crab in the protective forests. The productivity increases from 20% to 40-50%. to 50%. Many international organizations have been providing support to develop environmental restoration programs here to cope with climate change in Vietnam. One of them is a Swedish-funded project to help Cha Mao sustain the region's diverse ecosystem. Mr. Bui Chak Tui gave thanks to the support from Sweden. He said with the support they have implemented a program in Chai Mao National Park which also helps 20 households there sustain their livelihoods. The program has been very successful. With the current speed of climate change by the end of 21st century, 40% of agricultural land in the Mekong Delta region will be submerged. 4 million households will have no land to cultivate. Therefore, a solution for food security and livelihood sustainability needs to be found. This successful model of eco-aquaculture seems to be a positive first step in tackling this issue. Every year, Lao people celebrate the Horkau Padabdin festival. This way, they believe their deceased ancestors, the guardians of hell, will release them and other spirits to eat the food being offered. Devotees get up early at 3 to 5 a.m., preparing nine kinds of food and place them inside a Horkau, then take it to the temple or place Horkau around their house. 
With only the light from candles, people pray to relatives who have passed away to accept their offerings. They invite spirits to eat and call for mercy for them so that they can be reborn and freed from suffering, blessed with wealth and good health. About 7 to 8 a.m., temples become joyful once again when they become crowded with young people accompanying their parents to give alms, which begins with the senior monk in the temple telling lay people about the five commitments and encouraging them to make merit. After that, they are allowed to bring offerings such as candles, cow tum, and money directly to the monks at a long table with aluminum bowls. They believe these offerings will go to their specific relative spirits. When asked why Lao people celebrate the Horkao Padapdin festival, one Buddhist believer who was interviewed said placing food and sweets in packages wrapped up in banana leaves on the ground and fences at houses and temples during Horkao Padapdin festival brings merit. Also, abandoned spirits who are suffering will also be offered a gift. Buddhist believers also ask the spirits of the dead to protect their house and family and to have good health. Some of the believers believe by practicing this action will help ancestors, relatives and other spirits to have something to eat. In turn, all their family members and oneself will be black and happiness in their lives. Another believer said some of the Buddhist people are very serious in paying attention and following the Buddhist rules during the Buddhist Lent festival. The date of the festival depends on the Buddhist calendar. Meanwhile, this monk said the Horkao Padabdin festival usually takes place after the Buddhist Lent in the 8th or 9th month of the Buddhist calendar. After the end of a special ceremony at 9 a.m., monks recite the teachings of Buddha and tell the history of Buddhist Lent. Sharing a breakfast together after monks and novices eat is also a way of building solidarity amongst the community. The 5th Malaysia Night held at the Trafalgar Square in London recently attracted 43,000 visitors. The annual project undertaken by Malaysia Kitchen is to introduce the very best of Malaysian cuisine, culture and other products. Malaysia's Bar Trade Chief Executive Officer Dr Wong Lai Sum and the Deputy Mayor of London Sir Edward Lister launched the event at one of London's most iconic tourist attractions last Friday. Dr. Wong Lai Sum said events such as Malaysian Night has a big impact in promoting Malaysian foods and encouraging tourism to Malaysia. Visitors were treated to Malaysian favourite dishes such as grilled meat satay, laksa noodles, fried rice, meat rendang and desserts. Since the project was launched, the number of Malaysian restaurants in London has also almost doubled from 50 to 92. In addition, some 60 supermarkets now have Malaysian products on their shelves. Malaysian products are also being sold online via Ocado and Amazon.com. The Greater London Authority welcomes this annual event as it has helped build cordial Malaysia-Britain relationship. The event also showcased cultural entertainment of traditional music and dance performed by Malaysian students and local talents. A bustling Malaysian marketplace was created offering for sale ingredients such as sauces, spices and pastes giving Londoners the opportunity to cook Malaysian dishes at home.